Hey everybody and welcome back to another video in this series. So in this video particularly we're going to go over the update rotation function that we'll be making to work with our strafe input. So if we go into our input action graph you know we had set up the strafe input a couple videos ago you know in doing this and then we had set up the uh the camera style stuff to where you know if we hit play and we look at our different camera styles that we we zoom in we can zoom out we can get in closer to our character you know stuff like that right but yet yeah, the on the aiming and stuff like that or when we click the strafe button how our character doesn't actually strafe and that's what we'll be taking care of in this video is actually setting up the proper rotations so that way our character can actually strafe. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new function. However, before that, what we're going to do is I need to clean up a little bit because I forgot to do it in the last video. So real quick, as far as our cam styles and uh, camera variables, let's go ahead and create a category called camera and let's move our stuff in there real quick just like that and then we can go ahead and create our function so now what we're going to do then is we are going to create a function and we're going to call it update rotation just like that and now what we're going to do it's going to be very simple very easy because uh, it's just kind of like a minor thing so this video should hopefully be pretty quickly or pretty go pretty quickly should i say so just to start, we're going to drag out and we're going to look for a sequence node because we're going to go one of two ways with it or we're going to want it to go through all the code in a, a sequence because this is going to be everything that pertains to the rotation. So what we're going to do is we're going to get two branch nodes. So you're going to hold B and left click and generate two branch nodes. And then what we're going to do is let's work on the top one which is going to handle our uh, character orientation or strafing when we do want to strafe. So let's go ahead and in our variables open up the input and we're going to get the wants to strafe get variable and plug it into the branch. Then what we're going to do is we're going to grab the movement component and we're going to drag out and we're going to copy it and paste it just anywhere, anywhere is fine. Um, probably preferably next to it because what we're gonna grab now is uh, two functions. So, or not two functions, but two built-in uh, booleans. So when we do strafing or when you see other like YouTube tutorials that go over how to do strafing or fixing up your character's movements and stuff like that, you'll, you'll go over like one of two things where you'll either do um, the use controller desired rotation, whereas you can see if true, smoothly rotate the character toward the controller's desired rotation using rotation rate as a rate of change or rotation change and this is overwritten by orient rotation of movement normally you will want to make sure that other settings are cleared such as use control rotation yaw on the character you know etc because what this is doing or what this is going to do is this is going to make our character strafe right so if we check this off and we compile and save and hit play you'll or it should have Oh no, I think it's because I have the yaw, I believe so, right? Let me double check, I think that's what I was missing. Um, I believe it was up here in the third person. No, we need to have that checked, I believe. So let's go ahead and do that. Yep, so now we are strafing as such, right? However, we don't want to do that because that's just kind of like a lot of stuff to have to remember where we have to go into here to undo that and then go back into our character movement to then set uh, the controller desired rotation. So we're going to leave that unchecked and then what we're going to do is we're going to get this from our character movement. So off of your character movement, go ahead and drag out and look for controller desired rotation and we're looking for the set one because we want to set it true or true and false depending on what our strafe needs are, right? So we're going to grab that and then the second one that we're going to be looking for is the orient character to movement oh yeah because we're holding on to that so character movement and then orient character to movement and that's what we currently have going for us you know so when we actually hit 
play so we can pile and save this is our orienting to movement because wherever i want my character to move toward your character's rotation is going to orient itself to what you are the direction your character is trying to go in so that is what that is trying to do so now we're going to drag off this character movement and we're going to get the orient and we're going to do the set orient rotation to movement and we're going to drag it up like so and we're going to connect them just like that i'm going to move them a little bit closer so now we want to copy this and we want to paste it down below because what we're trying to do is when we want to strafe if this is true so if i clear this and look at the default value you can see that right off the gate we have our true so when we hook into here and when our sequence plays and everything and we go through our branch because we want to strafe because that's true it will go through here and turn this off and then turn this on which means that we're going to strafe because of this and we're no longer going to move in the direction that we are um, you know using our input buttons like our WASD or your control stick whatever you know so for the false, so let's go ahead and connect that, we want to do the opposite, where if we no longer want to strafe, then we want to turn the strafing off and then orient our character to whatever we're trying to move towards. So that is what we're trying to do there. So now that we have that set up, we can go ahead and drag off the first sequence and plug it into there. And then secondly, what we are going to do is for our next branch is we're going to grab the character movement again because we want to drag off and guilt or guilt we want to get the uh, get the is falling node right here under component ai components nav movement is falling because what this is is a built-in c++ uh pure function that will go over all of our navigation movement components to get whether we are in the air or not. So this doesn't really mean that we are falling because technically you falling means your, you know, Z velocity, whether it's real life or in game, is going down or at least going into the negatives because you are falling. However, this version of falling only tries to capture whether you're just generally in the air or not. So, you know, if I compile and save, and let's go into our uh let's go to content and characters and you don't have to follow me along on this on your side i just need you to see this so that way you know where i'm where this is coming from right so we go to mannequins animations and we open up the manny because this is where our default stuff is we're gonna hop into the anim graph and what we're going to do is i believe it's in the main states where you can see that we have a a falling alias with a jump and then a fall loop right but if we look at the transition rules you can see that in order to signify our jump animation that is placed in here as you can see our transition rule signifies is falling but again is falling only means that you're just generally in the air that's why they do an and get velocity Z is greater than 100 is because when you are jumping, getting into the air, that your Z velocity generates a positive number when you're going upward. But when you're going downward on the Z, it generates a negative number. So that's what that is doing. So, you know, just to show you, if we go back into the character blueprint and I'm going to go into the event graph and I'm going to do this just to show you what I mean by that so I'm gonna get our character movement and I'm gonna do get velocity so again just watch you don't have to follow along with this part but then if I split the velocity because this the X means if we go into the viewport and we look at our character the X value of velocity means that we're going either left or or right because this is what the X is it's this left left air or it's this red arrow to signify we're going left or we're going right the Y velocity means we're going forward or backward you know at a specific uh, speed but then the blue is our velocity Z where we get a certain speed going upward or downward right so that's what that is doing so if we go back into the event graph and I'm going to get a print string just like that 
and then I hook my Z velocity in there. And I'm also going to set the the time to 0 0.03 because I found that that is pretty good. So it, you don't have like a wall of, you know, output console. So if we hit play, you could see that we have like three up at the top corner. Like you can see that we have three 0 0.0s. But notice how, you know, when we start jumping and stuff that it generates a positive number, but you can quickly see that it goes, it becomes negative you know, when we are falling. So when we jump, positive, falling, negative. So that's what we're trying to, you know, get when we do this kind of falling is the positive to simulate the jump. And then the to fall loop is just, is falling because now we're no longer greater than 100. We now hit negatives. So th it'll just kind of hit our fall loop, you know, and then when we're no longer falling, we go into a land, right? So in this case, what we're trying to do with the update rotation is just get the general aspect that we are just in the air. So as long as we in, we are in the air, then do this certain true action or this certain false action. So the action that we are going to take in this one is we're going to drag off the character movement and off of the character movement, we're going to look for rotation rate and we're going to do set rotation rate. So if we compile and save before hooking anything up, let's go into our character movement and let's look for our rotation rate, right? So as you can see right here that we have a rotation rate of zero, zero, 500 degrees. So on our X and on our Y, we don't have any specific rates. I believe zero just means that it is set to, uh, that it happens pretty quickly as to where when we are in the air, you know, it's gonna take some time to do it, right? So if I hit play, see how our character, you know, rotates around, you know, pretty quickly, stuff like that. But then if I'm in the air, actually, I think the higher it is, the faster we are. That, I think that's what it is. Yeah, I, that's, that's what it is. Because watch what happens if we set it to, let's just do, Let's just do negative one, I believe, on the Z. That should disable it. Yeah, so look at look at that, right? So we have pretty much instantaneous turning. <laughs> like it is just it just looks weird. So it's just it's almost alien-like when you see it. So let's go ahead and revert that back to 500 as they had it. You could see that they had 365 for like a slower rotation rate, or 360, my bad, not 365 because you have to think of 360 in the form of a circle, right? Where when you go around in a circle, that is a total of 360 degrees. <clears throat> because, you know, you've probably heard the term, it's like, oh, they did a 180 and immediately turned at me because we rotated 180 degrees to get to turn around and then another 180 degrees to then face forward again, right? So that's why they put 360 degrees. So it's a normal revolution or a rotation rate, you know, when we spin around. By making it a higher number, we speed up that process. So with this, what we're going to do is we're going to copy this and we're going to paste it. And off the true, we're going to connect that and off the false, we're going to connect that. But now what we're going to do is when we are not generally in the air, we want to set this to 500. So that way we rotate rather quickly. So like in the game animation sample project, they'll have this set to negative one while the true rotation rate is at 200. So if I compile and say, or let me connect this. So now we're ready to connect this. So just to show you, so if I hit compile and save while we're on the ground, Oh yeah, because we didn't hit the we didn't hook this up. So now that we've you know made that and stuff, let's go ahead and drag this out and plug it into our event tick. And now we can compile and save. So when we hit play, when we when we stop rotating and or stop strafing, you can see that our rotation rate is at negative one. So we're instantly turning and it just looks bad, right? But then when we're in the air, look what happens when I'm trying to do like a 360, right? It, it's, it's super slow, not allowing that movement, right? But then if we go back into the update rotation and we're going to set this back to 500 just because it feels natural while we're in there doing that. But then imagine if we had 360 on the 
on the Z instead, we should be able to do a full rotation. Yeah, see, we, we were able to do a, a 360 rather well, right? It's still slower than this, as you can see, because we set it to a higher degree rotation rate so we can turn around faster on the ground, but in the air, it's going to be slightly slower. It may not be noticeable, but it definitely is because look, watch what happens when we set it back down to 200. That if I compile and save that, I still, I keep forgetting to do that. So you can see how I can't do that full rotation. Like we, it just, we're so slow in turning in the air. So that is essentially what is going on there now within this function. So we have our strafing stuff set up to where we strafe starting out because again, our default value set in here is that we want to strafe and it is true. So we are going to start out like this. And then when we are not strafing or when it's turned false, that we orient our character to uh, whatever direction that we're trying to move in. And then the next form of rotation is by setting more realistic rotation rates to where, sure, when you're on the ground, you should be able to, you know, rotate a little bit faster. But then if you're in the air, you know, good luck kind of rotating. Like there are ways to do it using momentum and stuff like that. But as far as a game sense, if you don't want to go into all that kind of physics and stuff like that, then setting it to a low value that's somewhat reasonable should be fine too. So. But we can go ahead and close out of that now. And now we have our update rotation. So now we have our camera styles and then we have our update rotation. So now as far as that goes, what I'm going to do is with our update rotation, I am going to move it into the movement category, just like that. And then we are essentially done with that because now that we have that set up, the next thing that we're going to go into, and let me bring it up on my side. So if I pull over the, my other project, we're gonna be going into the update movement function next, where if you've seen my gas from scratch series, this should look very familiar, where we're gonna be setting up our basic gates and then calculating our max speed so we can get our max walk speed and then our max walk crouch speed. So should be very familiar when we look at our gate, uh, get desired gate. The one thing you'll notice that's different is the fact that I do not have the second form for the world space because this is just, I'm trying to make this a very simple tutorial. I don't want to, you know, put in gamepad functionality quite yet. You know, you're more than welcome to do that, but then I recommend checking out my video in regards to that. So we're going to be setting this stuff up pretty quickly and then, you know, making sure that we get the proper uh, node return values out of here. And then after that, we're going to redo the calculate max speed. And I know this looks pretty scary, but again, if you had seen my character uh, blueprint from scratch series where we go over in this, I go over a lot of what this is doing. So it's not as bad as you may think. It's just definitely going to be a recap of kind of what we did there. So we'll be going over the movement functionality in the next couple of videos. And then after that, we should be ready to get into the animation blueprint. So I hope y'all stick around for that. But if y'all did, you know, like the video, stuff like that, I hope you give my other videos a shot, my future videos to come, just like always. But other than that, ladies and gentlemen, y'all have a great rest of your day and take care.